I will ask again Professor Henkes to share his experience with this new HPC coating for the stents, maybe stents of the future. You're welcome. Yeah, good, good afternoon. Um, th this is not, not the easiest topic, to be honest. Um, if, if you look at, uh, <coughs> these are flow diverters. If you look at flow diverters, which has been exposed to uh, blood, you will see uh, after a few minutes, they're going to be thrombos. So they are filled with coagulated blood. And those are flow diverters. So these are regular flow the first three lines. For regular flow diverters, if you look at reg uh, coated flow diverters, same conditions, exposure to full blood, no thrombus formation. So this is the summary of the whole topic. Um, this work, uh, in many aspects, is certainly beyond the intellectual horizon of a neuroradiologist, as you may observe. And I, I did this uh, with several people together. One of those is uh, Dr. Lenz Habian. He's a, a biologist and a genius. So the con our conflict is that I'm <clears throat> co-founder and shareholder of the company, which has financed this development. And uh, Tim is the, one of our employees. If we speak about uh, stenting his, uh, history, uh, it is not, uh, the, the history is not very long. Uh, if you look here, the first coronary stenting for, uh, to treat acute myocardial infarctions was not earlier than 1991. And in 1991, uh, 1999, the, uh, the first drug eluting stents came to the market. So we, we are, uh, the, the drug eluting technology, surface modification of stents, has a relatively short history. These first generation drug eluting stents were not anti-thrombogenic. They had a totally different uh, purpose. The, the, the purpose of this uh, coating was to reduce and inhibit the uh, vascular cell proliferation, though they were fully thrombogenic, but they had a biologic effect on the endothelium. Always niche came up with a stand which had both features. The combo stand uh, combines the uh, uh, inner surface, an aluminal surface, coating with, with uh, circulating, which is attracting, circulating uh, adult endothelial progenitor cells. They are cap captured from the blood and they are accelerating the endothelialization of these stents. Again, fully thrombogenic, but this was a, one of the early concepts to reduce in the midterm the thrombogenicity of the stents and the uh, outer surface, the, the uh, abluminal surface of the stent again has sirolimus as an anti-proliferate drug. Polycene F, um, this, this is a stand, a, a stand with polycene F coating, a cobalt chromium alloy stand with a, a nano coating polycene F has exactly the same effect. The, the purpose of this coating is again not anti-thrombogenic. The purpose is to accelerate the process of endothelialization. However, we have to keep in mind and we have to admit it is quite effective in terms of reducing thrombogenicity in the sense that the, uh, uh, the phase for dual antiplatelet uh, inhibition, which is needed, is reduced to two weeks only. That's a significant improvement against the, the regular drug eluting stents, which uh, previously needed one year of uh, dual antiplatelets and now uh, mostly are implanted under six months. So th the thrombogenicity is the same, however, the endothelialization is accelerated. So what's about the uh, dual platelet inhibitions? It, the, it is increasing the, uh, hemorrhage, the risk of hemorrhagic complications. In our field, in neuroradiology, mainly the risk of uh, intracranial hemorrhage. Um, if the patients are non-responders to aspirin or clopidogrel or any other P2 by 12 receptor antagonist, uh, we may observe uh, thrombus device thrombosis. And uh, there are other aspects like drug interaction, for instance, ibuprofen is completely antagonizing aspirin. Um, we have, this was mentioned previously, this day, uh, um, variable dosage requirements. The patient had a subrachnoid hemorrhage, the dosage requirement goes through the roof. And we face in patients who are properly inhibited after two weeks, two months, or at any point in time, uh, the possibility of hyper or hypo response, which may be there in the beginning or which may develop on the way. So the, the so-called holy grail of neurovascular standing is to re, uh, avoid the need for dual antiplatelet medication by reducing the thrombogenicity of the surface. These are mo in the majority of cases 19 old stands, and uh, we put we we try to put something on the surface which is preventing platelets to accumulate and adhere on the surface of this uh, implants. 
So in a in a perfect coding, uh, this would be allow this would be uh, possible to to implant without any uh, accompanying medication, and we are far away from this. I have to admit. But we are now in the situation when we can go from dual to mono anti-aggregation. These are historical examples. For instance, uh, gold coating was uh, combined with hirudin coating. Gold has no effect on the thermogenicity. Hirudin is reducing the thermogenicity. However, it's, it's short acting. So it, it, it works for one or two days and then it's, it's washed off and uh, you have the full th fully thermogenic gold coating. So it is Short term, okay, but it does not avoid the, the need for um, a dual antiplatelet medication. The uh, uh, diamond like carbon technology was quite interesting. Diamond, uh, diamond like carbon is a surface coating which makes the surface of the stents smoother. Uh, however, they show full thrombogenicity, it has no effect on the platelet adhesion. Um, Heparin coating was done. Heparin is okay. It is reducing short-term the thrombogenicity, but uh, it is not effective uh, for several weeks or months. The first successful um, uh, substance which was invented is um, um, phosphorylcholine. Uh, the, the data go back to 1984. These gentlemen, Hayward and Chapman, they, uh, they uh, discovered and evaluated phosphorylcholine and could show that uh, phosphorylcholine is reducing the thermogenicity and this is what is used today for um, the floor diverter from Medronic, which is called the uh, shield technology. It's a pretty old technology, uh, but it's certainly uh, anti-thermogenic. These are the molecules on the surface which inhibit the, thromb the thrombus adhesion. This is a comparison. Flex is the uncoated device, and shield is the, uh, the coated device. And the, the higher the curve, the more thrombogenous is the, the product. And you see the flex is, is uh, three times more thrombogenous than the shield. And this is just empty, no, no thing. So it is, let's say the shield is double as thrombogenic like uh, the, um, uh, the, the empty tube, but it has uh, significantly reduced thermogenicity. They compared uh, the Rivo P64 uncoated pipeline, uncoated and pipeline shield, and as you see here, the, the longer the bar, the, the higher the endothermogenic effect, and uh, pipeline shield is highly endothermogenic. Uh, pipeline uncoated and the Rivo uncoated are extremely thermogenic, and uh, P64 is more or less in the middle between the two. And uh, um, uh, Acandis is uh, pr propagating Pluxide, which is not of coating. It is a surface uh, modification, which again, as you see here, does not reduce the thermogenicity. This is a, a very typical image, what, what you can get with uh, full blood exposure of different products and uh, doing electron microscopy afterwards. So the Rivo P64 pipeline, pipeline shield, you see there's almost no uh, cell adhesion and thrombus adhesion on this shield a pipeline, and there's uh, a lot of thrombus adhesion and thrombus formation on the non-coded um, uh, uh, surfaces. So pipeline shield and phosphorylcholine is simulating the effect of erythrocytes. It, it is uh, as anti-thrombogenic as the surface of red blood cells. This is a totally different concept. This is the, the, the concept we were following, and uh, this glycocalyx is the inner slimy surface on the uh, vascular inner liner, and the, the substance we are using is a, a nanoglycane-based um, substance, which is uh, put on the surface of these implants on a nanoscale thickness. Uh, this is simulating not the erythrocytes, it's simulating the inner surface of arteries with the same effect. So this is bear and uh, HPC coated devices in comparison, full, blo full blood, whole blood exposure and uh, fluores fluorescent microscopy. And you see there are a lot of uh, platelets on the surface of the bare layer and this uh, HPC coating is preventing the uh, uh, platelet adhesion. The same is true for a flutter verter. This is flutter verter without coating and with coating. And this shows a, uh, an experiment. So uh, the, the, the regular exposure is for minutes. So this, this is called a, uh, uh, a loop device, this gentler loop. And this allows exposure experiments for hours. You, could, you can do this in these rotating loops for uh, hours and days. 
same result, uh, uncoated versus coated. You have uh, a lot of uh, thrombus material on the uncoated surface and nothing on the coated surface. And uh, we were lucky to receive an award for this publication from CVIR. We tested this in, uh, in animals and saw that there is no difference in the process of endothelialization, which means in difference to the uh, polycene F, uh, with this coating we don't observe, unfortunately, an accelerated endothelialization. The speed of endothelialization for uncoated and P HPC coated devices is the same. Uh, there are new uh, pro um, projects coming up. Uh, CD31 uh, coating is tried by, uh, from BALT. They uh, they try to uh, uh, coat their float averters, and this is us. The, the, um, uh, the, the effect is main, probably mainly, again, this accelerated endothelialization. In vitro results, however, show that also the need for uh, acute anti-aggregation is reduced. No, today, nobody knows if this uh, CD31 coding is, will allow the, to implant these devices under mono-aggregation. There are no clinical data available so far. And uh, Acantis has another project, Derivo Heal, which means uh, another coating. This Derivo Heal is a combination of, um, it is heparin-based essentially, and um, it may work, however, again, the in vitro results mainly shows, as far as they are published, it shows um, biocompatibility, but the uh, um, anti-aggregation or th reduced homogenicity effect has not been shown so far. The last principle is uh, this uh, X coating from uh, Teruma. It's a node coating which was originally used to uh, coat uh, infusion bags and tubes and everything. It, and it has been uh, adapted to the technology of permanent implants. Uh, again, data are not available. So the, these were the original X coated products. And now they have a, uh, a float averter with, with X coding, but they, they don't claim uh, full, uh, redu fully reduced th thermogenicity. So in summary, we can say the HPC uh, definitely reduces significantly the thermogenicity of these implants. Uh, pipeline shield, the same. The difference is between the two is not known. The uh, push force is uh, reduced for pipeline shield, and, and it is not very significant for the uh, uh, Phoenix float operator, so it's no big deal. The Derivo heel, uh, we see some th reduced some thermogenicity and accelerator incro. The uh, incro th uh, acceleration is more significant with this polycene F, and CD34 and X uh, have hardly defined pr uh, properties at the moment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Very fascinating uh, uh, lecture you had. Well, maybe this is real the future of the, of the stands. Sure. Is there any questions because he's in a hurry for the flight, his flight? So, okay, there is no. Thank you once again for your contribution. Have a nice flight back. <laughs>